care feed starters off, that broad program, looking again at that sort of next stage program uh, coming through in how does one program work coming together? And I'm really, really pleased now to um, invite Phil and Kate, I think, to join us to talk about a specific program, uh, which is the key working program, which is one of my favourites uh, because it was based on one of my recommendations. So, you know, when I do finally retire and disappear, I'll know that I've made a difference. Uh, but I have to say the um, complete uh, running of this programme, its delivery, uh, and it's uh, a real, really good outcomes today are nothing to do with me at all, uh, but to do with the incredibly successful management that Phil and Kate put in place. So there you are, you two, over to you. <laughs> and the dog. Thank you very much, Christy. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Phil Brayshaw and I'm the acting head of children and young people in the National Learning Disability and Autism team. Um, I have a couple of slides I, to set the context um, within our programme for key working and then Kate's going to talk through um, key working and, and the progress to date. Um, so I have three slides just to, to outline the work and one of the reasons that I wanted to do this was to, to show really how key working connects with, with all of the work in the programme um, at NHS England and NHS Improvement. Um, Marie, is Marie moving on, on the slides? If we could move on to the uh, first slide, thank you. So there are there are three slides, three areas of of, um, of work in, in the national team that I wanted to talk about. The first one is identifying and supporting children and young people. I'll then talk about improving quality and then finally around improving health. So identifying and supporting children and young people, the first thing is we're keen to understand in every local area who um, we're key, keen to understand in every local area the, the needs of, of children and young people with learning disabilities and autistic children and young people. So what we've asked every local area to do is to create a dynamic support register and, and have directed local areas to particularly understand those children and young people who were at risk of admission to tier four mental health hospital and those who will become at risk of admission um, if their needs aren't met and that that's around cross system support so that's dynamic sport registers going forwards and I, I think Kate will touch on this the dynamic sport registers when you're identified as as needing um, an urgent response one of those responses will be to allocate a key worker. So let's say if you're identified as amber or red on the dynamic sport register, you will be allocated the key worker and that key worker will help um, the, the child young person and the family to make sense of support and services that, that are offered locally. The, the second part of this programme of work is around care education and treatment reviews. So this is to sit, sitting down with, with children and young people to understand their care needs and to make sure that those care needs are being met. The third part is around developing community support and services. So last year we put £25 million of additional funding into improving intensive and then enhanced support, particularly for autistic children and young people between the age of, of 14 and 25. This year we're, we're putting in an additional £40 million through the Service Development Fund. Um, which again we'll be looking at, 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 at we'll be looking at targeted investment for intensive and enhanced support services, and then finally, and as Kate will talk about in, in more detail, key working. So, so the links here are between the dynamic support register identifying those children, and young people, and making sure they get the right support and services. The key work, the key workers helping children, and young people, families to make sense of that. The care education and treatment reviews assessing the needs of children and young people, making recommendations about their future care and treatment and, and thinking about how key workers will make those recommendations a reality for those children and young people and their families. And then developing new community support and services. And again, key workers will play a key part in making sure that the children and young people are connected with that support and services at, at the right time for them. So, so I this is this is a big part of our work identifying sporting children and young people 
I talk about a risk of, of tier four mental health hospital, but it's also thinking about children and young people who are at risk of other institutional placements. So that might be 52 week residential school. It might be placements within health and justice services. So, so there's something around how do we identify those children and young people who without additional support uh, would would potentially end up out of area or in institutional care? And, and these are, are four of the four of the programmes of work to do that. So that's the, the first part. If we could move on, please. Thank you. Um, the second part is around improving quality. So that's about thinking about how as a national team we can respond to individual children and young people whose needs are not being met um, either locally or with regional oversight. So, so those children and young people um, who without very flexible um, direct personalised intervention may uh, be admitted to hospital, uh, be subject to, to um, extended length of stay in hospital or be admitted to, to other institutional care. So there's, there's a piece of work around that and I don't know if Kate will cover that in the key working presentation a little more but again happy to talk about that um, on a future occasion. Um, we're looking at improving quality in inpatient settings including reducing restrictive practices and again care education and treatment reviews are, are key to that. So what, what is a children and young people's and ex, um, family's experience of the care that they're receiving? Is it the right care? Is it safe? Are they receiving effective treatment? Do people need to be in hospital? Can people be better supported at, at home or in their community? And the third area of work is around improving health. Um, we, as, as a programme, were born out of, of the response to Winterborne View and transforming care. And I think we've been very focused on preventing admission to tier four mental health hospital and making sure that the, the length of stay there is, is the right one and that, that discharge, discharges are well planned um, and that community services are more responsive to people's more complex needs. Um, we are moving as a learning disability and autism programme much more to consider the health needs of children and young people with learning disabilities and autistic children and young people. And, and what we're looking to do is, is balance um, our work much more as a programme. So, so one of the things that, that we've been doing for, for a little while is to make sure that there are sensory checks in place in residential schools, so that's hearing, eyesight and, and dental checks for, for people um, in 52 weeks, for children and people in, in 52 week residential schools. We're looking as a, a children and people's programme, how we support the wider learning disability and autism programme in the long term plan commitments. So that's to make sure that there's a, a good uptake in annual health checks for children and young people 14 plus um, to support the stamp, stamp agenda, which is about making sure that the children and young people receive um, the, the right medication at the right time for the right reasons and reducing health, health inequalities across the board, in, including supporting the leader programme. So that's some of the work that we're doing at the moment. One of the future areas of work is, is to work much more um, closely um, with colleagues across the NHS to make sure that children and young people have equal access to a good experience and good outcomes from um, NHS services across the board. And um, again, um, connecting to, to Lorraine's um, presentation earlier, make sure that we've got those links to special educational needs and disability through the SEND agenda, particularly around improving health. So that, that's an increased focus. And again, in terms of thinking about the key workers might, might support that, we're already doing some work thinking around how the dynamic support registers could be used to identify uh, complex health needs alongside risk of admission to hospital. That will be a focus of, of, of work moving into the into the next year um, and CTRs will become um, a, a, a key way of making sure that children's health needs are being assessed and met um, and that's um, particularly in response to some of the early learning from the the safe and well-being um, reviews. So three areas of work, identifying and supporting children and young people, particularly those at, at risk of admission to hospital, improving quality of community and inpatient services and improving health of, of children and young people with learning disabilities and autistic children and young people. So three areas of work, um, and I think each of those areas could benefit from and could support the 
programme of key working that, that Kate will go on to describe. Thank you, Phil. And a thank you for the opportunity to come and share some more information today about what key working is. Um, I recognise quite a few names already involved in the chat and know they're doing some great work in their local areas, but also recognise with some people there might be some uncertainty about what this is. So I hope to answer some of your questions. If I don't get the opportunity to answer more today, I'm happy to respond to further questions using my email address after the chat. But it should give you a chance to be slightly more clear about what key working is and also what it might mean for you in your local area if it's not yet begun to be established. So a helpful starting point is to share the vision for key working, which, as Christine rightly said, was originated in her report. These are our children. What we're aiming to achieve is a service in every area that just focus on children with autism or learning disability who have the most complex needs who are at risk of institutional care. So it's not an early intervention or prevention service, but I think it has the potential to make a significant difference for a small number of children, but at the same time, create a small amount of impact for a significant number of children in terms of the learning and the opportunities it brings through an increased focus on integrated working. So, um, there will be um, a key working service in each area, which may look slightly different in relation to the locality, but a requirement is that there will be a key worker named for young people and their families to make sure that they are fully involved in their plans, feel listened to, informed, plans are personalised and they support their need at the right time in a coordinated way. So the mission that we are engaged in is to support local areas to plan and implement key working services that work for them with the strategic involvement of young people, parent carers and their system partners. As, as Zoe shared earlier, co-production is really listening to young people, parent carers and families, but also listening to the local stakeholders and services as well in working together to sort of map and model what key working will look like in your area. Equally to ensure that arrangements are sustainable and that the sustainable host service for key working is identified which is well placed to build strong relationships and link systems together, because although the money comes from health for key working, it's actually a, a service that works across the local system rather than delivers care in, in a health organisation. And as, as Phil rightly pointed out, critical to uh, key working is the identification of children and people at the right time who are having growing risk of need, and that should be through the dynamic support register in the first phase. Our mission obviously as well is to recruit people with the right skills and capabilities to deliver the work and understand what that should be in order to deliver the right outcomes that young people and families have described with us, which broadly speaking are around improving their experiences so that they feel self, feel safe, uh, feel involved, listened to and well informed, have a reduction in stress and uncertainty and an increase in stability, um, access improved personalised support and uh, quality of care in terms of reasonable adjustments is equitable and, uh, and agreed with the young person and family. So if I could move on to the next slide, thank you Marie. I thought it would be helpful to give you a kind of overview where we're at in the journey at the moment. So we started uh, with substantial consultation and co-production in terms of scoping what key working should do, what the key working functions are and what capabilities key workers should have. And are grateful to work closely with the um, Health Education England and the Council for Disabled Children in terms of that scoping and description. That led us to um, have a selection process for areas who are willing to pilot key working services based on those functions and capabilities across the seven regions of NHS England. And um, those um, pilot sites began mobilising in October 2020. And just referencing the comment that Christine made earlier, I think we can see that huge amount of passion and energy in those people steps forward under the, the circumstances of a pandemic to really sort of drive through what key working could be and help us shape what it looks like. 14 early adopter sites joined them in um, April 2021 and continuing their mobilisation and delivery to really help us understand how it works, what makes a difference and um, what we should be focusing on in terms of our rollout. Um, we did commission an external review of the pilot phase, which reported in January, 
and what that's, that's led to is a report which provides guidance for the remaining 16 ICS areas who will be introducing key working services during the next financial year. So we, we have um, the start of a richness of information as to what the strong foundations are, what supports mobilisation and good indicators of success in terms of delivering key working. So our aim for the next financial year is to get positioned where every area will have a key working service and to think ahead of, of the final year of the kind of the, the implementation of key working, which is where there'll be an expectation for full scope so that key working will be available for young people in scope up to the age of 25 and that it will be expanded beyond just those young people at risk of admission into mental health hospital or who are in mental health hospital, but to include the risk of admission to institutional care, as Phil described, whether that be 52 week residential special school, health and justice system or the looked after system. So if I could just move to the next slide, thank you. So in terms of thinking about key working, to conceptualise it, it's really a service rather than a role. There isn't a single key working role and the service is there to deliver key working functions in a way that best fits that local system. So it takes into account what was already there, what can be built on. Um, services can be hosted by health, local authority or the third sector um, in whatever way that is described best from the, the co-production that will be taking place in terms of, um, of um, drawing together what their model looks like. Um, at the moment, what we can see is there is no optimal hosting arrangement, that services are working well wherever they are hosted, but by virtue of being hosted in one of those sectors, there are different challenges and, and solutions that need to be found to them becoming operational. Um, so I thought the best way really to sort of give you a flavour of what key working is, is to share a couple of case stories that um, have recently come out of some of the pilot sites. Um, I think that's the best way of helping understand what key working can be and what the outcomes are that it can bring. I think it's probably fair to say that the learning that's coming out of those early sites is that there are a high proportion of children and people who are autistic, who um, are experiencing mental health difficulties that put themselves either at high risk of harm to themselves or at risk of harm um, for providing risk of harm to others, very often not in the education system, very often have spent time in mental health hospital and sometimes have had repeated stays in mental health hospital. So um, as you can see, this is a story about a young person that had been in hospital for some time and the, the role of the key worker was really to, to bring the right people together, to listen to the young person, to find the thing that was going to make the biggest difference. Oh, my slides have gone, which is throwing me somewhat. They'll appear, I'm sure. That's OK. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to, to, to really spend time engaging with and listening to the young person to fully understand their views, to be able to be in a position to advocate for them. So that does require doing activities with the young person, thinking differently about how you find that young person's voice, how you build a relationship with them, how you understand what's going to make a difference, to consider that young person holistically. But key workers and key working services also require to have a broad knowledge of what the support is available locally, or to be able to look at how they can maybe commission something and there are some innovative practices around holding small amounts of funds that can do this to help that young person recover and, and work towards their aspirations. So in this particular case, for this young person, um, it was all around them starting to receive adult services, because as we know, crisis often happens at the point at which you're hitting 17 and approaching 18. Um, to help to move into a new school, to uh, continue education and study for A-levels, to look at how aspirations towards a career in IT could be supported, which has led to that particular young person being hopeful for the future and the parents begin on to return to work and thinking about themselves and uh, them as a family. So if I could move to the next slide, please. I've got a second uh, example again a younger autistic person, long history of suicidal thoughts, spending a lot of time outside education, family exhausted and feeling like giving up. Um, key worker, 
well positioned to um, provide some coordinated, integrated uh, conversations around the young person, bringing a deeper understanding of what that person's needs were to help services think about reasonable adjustments and personalisation based on a, on a strong relationship in a position to sort of coordinate the young person's needs, but at the same time consider what the family might need as well. And that has led to, uh, again, a young person setting into a new school, uh, a measure of their reduction in risk being that they're no longer included in the dynamic support register locally. And again, family thinking about their lives and how, how they can move in the right direction. And that's that quote in the blue, blue box uh, is um, a direct quote from a letter that uh, I was given on recently visiting um, one of the pilot sites that kind of sort of, I think, really dis um, succinctly describes the essence of key working in, in terms of, of what it has the potential to deliver and the difference it has to, to, to give families uh, in harnessing and working with the system and the support offer that, that is available in the local system and at the same time potentially highlighting the gaps and thinking with local services about how they could be responded to or considered differently. So where we've got to now, if we move to the next slide, is um, a deeper understanding of, of what key working can be and how we shape it moving forward. We really understand that uh, it's important for those services being developed next year to spend time establishing strong foundations and that the voice of young people and families at the centre is critical to get it right and that um, it really requires and benefits from sustained cross-system leadership and oversight and that that needs to sustain not just through the kind of the writing of the expression of interest but through to mobilisation and delivery towards sort of really being established particularly as we heard earlier we're going through a critical period of change in moving to integrated care boards and that the services themselves need strong leadership within and, and a mix of roles. So we're seeing a skill mix that is a mix of kind of senior roles and practitioner roles. And that um, those roles are drawn across um, the kind of system that they work within. So services that are being successful have uh, people from a health background, whether they'll be allied healthcare professionals, psychologists, or learning disabilities nurses, also, they have uh, people from a teaching uh, and education background and a social care background and that strong services uh, have broad skill mix that comes together to enable um, um, consideration to allocation of a key worker towards a young person or child that comes through the dynamic support register. Um, some services also have introduced a kind of um, a support worker role in there that has the opportunity to do some closer working with the family to really substantially understand their needs. But I think it's important to stress that this service isn't about delivering an intervention. It's about understanding the family and facilitating integrated support that that young person needs at that particular point in time. I think what we are discovering is that key working is demanding, it's emotionally challenging and it requires really strong clear line management, support and supervision. And that's obviously got to be a big consideration in sustainability but and also in, in recruitment as well. Um, and um, what is essential for, for a good sort of key working service is that key workers that are able to hold boundaries and are supported by effective escalation processes because it's not possible to resolve all the issues and barriers that might be encountered but have a, a way of identifying what they are and seeking um, senior support in uh, finding the solutions that will make a difference for those young people. So um, mindful of time, I'll move on to the next slide, which is um, more or less the last one. So uh, our priorities for key working in the, the next sort of financial year as we move towards hopefully having a key working service in every area is keeping a strategic co-production strong at all levels and uh, seeking the voice of young people and families in uh, the development of the strong foundations, in the setup, in terms of what job descriptions look like, in the recruitment process, in thinking about escalation processes, in thinking about governance. Um, also, obviously, a strong focus on workforce. I think that key working is quite pioneering, that we are talking about an integrated workforce. 
which obviously brings some challenges and we have to think for the future in terms of what that means for um, uh, sustaining the workforce, replacing the workforce, uh, thinking about the training and skill mix that's required by the workforce moving forward. And uh, at the moment, we are working to understand what induction needs to look like at a local level and enhancing what the national offer in, in terms of training is. And we have um, three modules which are available from the e-learning for health pra um, platform, which we've developed working with Health Education England, which are the foundations for key working and alongside that delivery of a legal framework and safeguarding training, which really equips um, key workers with an understanding of the sort of um, legal frameworks and the statutory processes that they will, may well need to draw on. So we um, intend to continue to sort of uh, learn what best practice looks like and to help areas shape their development of their services in line with that. Obviously, it's essential that we demonstrate impact and, and harness not just the case stories that we're learning about, but really kind of uh, shine a light on the outcomes and think about what the uh, benefit uh, realisation is and what the wider impact um, not just on local systems, but on in terms of perhaps our uh, national strategy services. Um, as I say, huge focus on sustainability. Um, our mission is not just to introduce these services, but to ensure that they sustain and continue into the future. But also, we obviously need to think uh, significantly around understanding what that full scope needs to look like in 23, 24. So we'll be spending some time uh, consulting on that and understanding what that might mean. And um, just to reassure you that there is um, an increased funding resource that comes with this in 23, 24 to um, cope and respond to the increase of numbers of young people that will be included. Um, one thing I meant to say but didn't was that there are services already in either the pilot or the early adopter phase that um, are working with young people up to 25 already so that we have substantial learning already about what that looks like. It's really only the uh, the other group of children at risk of institutional care that, that we, we really need to think about. So uh, I think my only other final slide after this one is to share the link to the web pages that relate directly to key working where you'll be able to find um, a list of the areas who are pilots early adopters and who will be developing uh, their plans for services to introduce them in the next financial year and there's my email address if anybody wants to get in touch with any, any specific questions thank okay. you Thank you, Thank Kate. You. We are running out of time in this session, but that was really, really helpful. Um, and as somebody who's been involved in this programme from the start, um, it's just been really good to see the sort of embedding of all the values. You get lots and lots of applause, Kate, uh, as we've gone forward on it. And for that odd exchange where somebody had already decided we were putting strange time limits on key working, uh, please don't believe everything that you see. Um, this is a very flexible programme and uh, Kay and the team and Phil will be very happy to talk to you. But do have a look at it. It's uh, it's really quite exciting. So thank you very much. Um, we've got workshops coming up. So just a couple of final things from me. It's been a really productive, uh, useful session, I think. So and um, one of the things that's been really important about today are your contributions, but also the contributions of the speakers who are often giving you information that is in development. Yeah, so in development, not yet cleared and whatever. So we will share with you uh, what we can as we develop. Um, one of the things is our plug is as the Council for Disabled Children, this is our last <laughs> national conference within this contract. If you would like us to be able to run more national conferences in our next contract that we can't tell you that we've got yet, um, then please fill in the evaluation form, which by magic will fit, appear on your screen. It really helps us convince the statutory agencies that we work with um, that this is a useful use of their money, our time and your time. I always find them incredibly helpful. So please do, that would be incredibly helpful uh, for us as well. And um, 
Marie, who is uh, making everything work in the background, as you will see, uh, will also follow up with you. Um, just to remind you as well, we have a webinar on health advice in education, health and care plans on the 16th of March. And also at your request over time, we have produced a new set of e-learning, which is now accessible on the link for CAMS services into education, health and care plans, as we understand uh, children's mental health needs in the round and how they fit you all. So I am now going to leave you in peace um, so you have, I think, probably two minutes, which is very generous, before your workshops start. Enjoy your workshops. Thank you for everything that you are doing. Please don't forget the evaluation form and we'll talk to you all again soon. Take care. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, everyone. And uh, just a final um, reminder, if you haven't got your workshop link and you think you should have one, um, then yeah, do get in touch with the DBA. And, uh, and going forward, Adiba will be absolutely key in these sessions that we will be carrying on running, even though we can't tell you that we are. Um, so, um, so yes, so she's going to be your right hand woman. So remember that name. Thanks, everyone.